All right, we are going to talk today about radioactive half-life. And I say radioactive, but really this principle applies to any half-life concept, right? Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, medicines, uh, like the medicines you find in your medicine cabinet, are often given a half-life as well, right? And so the, the term still applies to them. But the concept of half-life is uh, it's sort of like a light year in that a lot of people have heard of it and they don't realize what it means. A half-life is the length of time it takes one half of a material Uh, and in radiation, that material is usually a father, or otherwise known as a parent isotope, to decay to a different material. And again, in radioactivity, the different material that we get is a daughter isotope. Um, so it's kind of fun. So a half life, right, is half is is the lifetime of half of the material. That's kind of where the term comes from. A light year, right, is the length of distance. It's the the the, the distance, the amount of space that light goes in a year. So it's kind of fun. They're, they they both kind of don't indicate. A lot of people think half life. Oh, that's you know it's going to be an amount. It's going to be a half or a fraction, right? And half life problems often do involve fractions. And so we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but uh, and people hear a light year and they think that's a length of time, but it, but they're not, right? Um, they're not what they seem to be. So a half life problem um, in uh, posted. Is a whole host of half-life problems on a little on a little sheet, and I'm just going to cut and paste the first one here into um, uh, hopefully. Oh, there it is, right there. Um, a half-life problem sort of reads like this, and they are all work kind of the same way. I there is a mathematical way to do this. Uh, I do not use a mathematical method to do this. I use a visual representation. It's it's more of a conceptual thing for me. And this method use uh, works almost every time. This is problem number one for those of you who didn't see that. Um, and the way this works is um, way back when, when I was first learning fractions, I was taught fractions using pi. And not 3.14159, no, not the number, like an actual pi, like an apple pie or a blueberry pie or something like that. So when I do this, I always go back to thinking about those pies. And so the first pi that we've got is a whole pi, right? And that whole pi is 100%, or if you want to think about it, or you can think about it as 1 over 1, if you want to think about it in fraction notation, of something, right? And then what happens with that pi is one half-life goes by, and that pi, all of a sudden, instead of being 100%, it's now half of itself. So we're going to fill in half of this pi. And that is, I mean, look at that. That's just perfectly divided in half right there, right? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And my coloring skills, I mean, my gosh. Oh, man. Some shiraku shading in there or something. Anyways. Well, all right. So here's the deal. One half-life went by. Half of it degraded into something else. So that means now we've got 50% or 1 over 2. So you can think about each time we go through a half-life, we're going to multiply by 1 over 2. Because 1 over 1 times 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. Another half-life goes by, and this is where things get tricky. 1 half-life. If another half-life goes by, well, what happens now, nothing happened to this side of the circle, right? This side of the circle is already gone. It didn't care that one half-life. It could be a thousand half-lives. Nothing's going to happen to that side of the circle. A lot of people say, well, then the other half disappeared. No, only half of what remains disappears. So we got to take this part, and we got to cut it in half, and half of it is going to disappear. 
And so we're left with this piece of the pie right there. Half of 50% is 25%. Or we can have, I'm going to do the fraction down here below because I ran out of space, one quarter. Again, we're multiplying by half. One over two times one over two equals one over four. If we did it again, guess what we get? We get one eighth or 12.5%. I'm not going to draw that one because I draw that one pretty terribly, let me tell you. Um, but anyways, when we go up here to cesium, we look at this cesium problem, we see we start off with one gram of cesium. So I'm going to put in this circle how much cesium I've got is 1.0 grams. I don't really care that it's cesium-137, I just care that I've got one gram of it. And what it's going to do is it's going to disintegrate for a half-life. All right, how long is its half-life? Well, its half-life is 30 years. It says it right there, 30 years. I don't know why it won't let me click outside that box, but you know what, we'll go for it. So the half-life for this thing is 30 years, which is abbreviated Y. How much is left after 30 years? Well, half of that 1.0 is 0 0.5 grams. If you want to, you could draw in and shade in half of this circle show that half of it's gone. You don't have to do that each time, okay? Don't have to do that each time. Another half-life goes by, that's another 30 years. And now we've gone from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 grams. And then another 30 years goes by. I'm gonna draw me another circle. And now we're down to 0 0.125 grams. How much time has elapsed now? Well, we've got 30 plus 30, plus 30, right? Right there, 30 plus 30 plus 30 is 90 years. And it asks me how much it remains after 90 years, right? It disintegrates over a period of 90 years. How many would remain? How much remains? One, uh, excuse me, 0.125 grams, or an eighth of a gram, if you will. Easy enough. Easy enough. If it went into the fraction, it didn't ask me for the fraction, so I'm not worried about that. Um, if you do problem number two, go ahead and look at problem number two and go ahead and try and work it out. I'm going to work it out, and the answer is going to pop up here next. So the answer is 25 milligrams. If the half-life is 29 hours, it takes two half-lives to get up to 58 hours. 100 goes down to 50, and 50 goes down to 25. 25 milligrams is what we have left. Notice how much quicker this one disintegrates. Isn't that interesting? Some of these half-lives are going to be very, very long. Some of them are going to be very, very short. Some of them are millions of years. Some of them are microseconds. Tiny, tiny fraction of time. Uh, we're going to jump real quick. We're going to jump down to problem number... Um, Problem number five. Um, yeah, I like problem number five. Let's look at problem number five. If you look at, come on. I'm betting that text box up above. It's cutting and pasting it in. Oh, it did. Oh, my God. Um, wow, that got crazy. Trying to look at problem number five here. Hopefully you're reading it and trying to dissect it while I am trying to get this working. Um, let's see here. There she is. Let's get rid of all that. I don't know why it's not letting me. All right. So selenium-83 is a half-life of 25 minutes. How many minutes would it take for a 10 milligram sample to decay and only have 1.25 milligrams? So again, here we'll do 10 down to five, and you don't have to draw the circles if you don't want to draw the circles, but you know what? The circles help me remember that I'm doing half life, so I like to do it. So 25 minutes, another 25 minutes, we're down to 2.5, another 25 minutes, we're down to 1.25, and that's how much we need to stop. So that is 75 minutes. Cool? All right, let's try one a little more difficult. Um, problem number six is a little more difficult. There she goes. Now it let me cut and paste problem number six. 
Um, I'm not so much worried about the first part. The first part is just like what we've been doing. Um, what I'm worried about is this last question right here. Suppose you wanted to buy some of this isotope and required half an hour for it to reach you. How much should you order if you need to use 0.1 grams of this material? Now, the problem with this is it doesn't give us a starting location. It doesn't give us how much we want to start with. It's asking me, how much do I need to start with? So the what goes in this first circle, we don't know. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to start at the end. It's saying at the end, I need 0.1 grams. So I'm going to start down here at the end with 0.1 grams. I'm going to let a reverse half-life, I'm going to go backwards in time. I'm going to imagine three minutes before that, how much material did I have? Well, I had 0 0.2 grams. So we're going to just keep building backwards. 0 0.4 grams. Now we're up to six minutes. How far do we need to go? Well, it says uh, half an hour for it to reach you. So we need to go up to 30 minutes. So three minutes here. That's nine, 12, 14, 15, 12. It might help to keep track of how many minutes it's been. I'm going to keep track of how many minutes it's been down here on the bottom. 1.6 grams. Uh, this one is 18 minutes. 3.2 grams. Um, we're going to go back this way a little bit. 6.4 grams. That's uh, 21 minutes later. Back again, three more minutes for 24 minutes. Now let's move this 21 minutes right here. Put that right there. Uh, that gets me to 12.8. And then um, come back over this way because this one's going to be 27. Uh, 25.6 grams. And then three minutes before that, oh, which is 30 minutes. Right, 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30 minutes later. What did we need to buy? We needed to buy 51.2 grams of this material. I'll erase that one since I don't need it anymore. I was trying to get back to the beginning. That almost worked out smoothly, right? Almost. 51.2 grams is how much you need to start off with. Is that amazing? To be able to use a tenth of a gram of this material... We need to make 51.2 grams of it. It's pretty cool. So that's how you do a half-life reaction. That's it. There is a mathematical way to do this. Now, if you want to know the math, I'll tell you the math. The fraction that you're left off with is, is multiplied by 1 over 2 to the n, where n equals the time that it takes over the half-life. It's the number. n here is the number of half-lives. Um, however, I think that is uh, far more complicated than just doing it using, just doing this. It takes a little less time to do it that way, but you know what? I like doing it with the circles. Stepwise works just as well.